This kite surfer is hitching a ride on a moving air mass. Our transparent atmosphere reveals itself when it starts to move. Moving air, of course, is wind. The atmosphere surrounding us is a deep ocean of air extending for kilometers above us. We know that the atmosphere is essential to life on Earth. The components of air, particularly oxygen and carbon dioxide, play a critical role in the chemistry of life. Another important aspect of air is atmospheric pressure. We live at the bottom of an ocean of air. The pressure is greatest at the bottom, the Earth's surface, the level where we live. Well, did you know the Earth processes air much like a compressor? The weight of our atmosphere actually compresses air, generating 14.7 pounds of pressure per square inch at sea level. Pressure is a force per unit area. The standard SI unit of pressure is the Pascal. One Pascal is one Newton of force per square meter. You will also find PSI, or pounds per square inch, used in parts of the world particularly America. Air pressure at sea level is 14.7 psi or 101.3 kilopascals. That's over 101,000 newtons of force per square meter. If you have a small kitchen table one meter square, the force in that area created by air pressure is approximately 101,000 newtons, equivalent to the weight of 10 cars sitting on the tabletop. If air pressure can generate such huge forces, why don't we notice it? Why doesn't the table collapse? It turns out that pressure in a fluid like air transmits in all directions, not just down. This means that the 101,000 newtons of force pushing down on the tabletop is balanced by 101,000 newtons pushing up. Forces are balanced. Similarly, our bodies are not crushed because the fluids contained within our skin exert a pressure that balances atmospheric pressure. Well, uh, what, what, what exactly does that mean in terms of um, the uh, cold steam? I mean, what's the difference between cold steam turbine and a cold steam um, pump? In the Tesla turbine, the air enters either a port or a diverging nozzle at the periphery. The air spirals into the centre in the same way water spirals down a plug hole. The air imparts some of the heat energy to the rotor and the rotor converts the heat into kinetic energy. Rapid implosions are possible when the air reaches supersonic speeds. The rapid implosions cause the water vapour in the air to evaporate into cold steam. Cold steam is 85 times more viscous than air and the turbine is designed to harness this large mechanical advantage. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, be heating up a little bit of water in the bottom and as we heat the water up it changes phase from liquid to gas and that gas fills that space and all of the inside gets really hot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the gas off and we're going to close the lid and we're going to put the hose pipe on and what should happen is that because the volume expanded when it was hot and then it changes back from water vapour to water liquid it's going to create a whole lot of, uh, it needs less space and it won't be able to suck air in because the lid is going to be on and then it's going to collapse in. So I think we're pretty close to being there. Uh, so maybe Mr. Hodgson and Mr. Briscoe can just pick the gas out.
stand your ground, We welcome you to utilize this video in employee and stakeholder training. Jason, Dak, start the engine. The gauge, the gauge that's on top of the tank trailer is a vacuum gauge. So that's showing negative pressure inside the tank. In 1812, William Hyde Wollaston brought out a scientific apparatus called a cryophorus. The device consists of a boiling flask containing water, a condensing flask packaged in ice, and a channel to join the two flasks. An external vacuum pump is connected to the channel and a high partial vacuum is applied. The high partial vacuum causes the water in the boiling flask to evaporate into cold steam and then it travels through the channel to the condensing flask where it condenses back to water. This phenomenon must have appeared very puzzling over two centuries ago and at the time the people thought that the cold from the ice was being carried to the water. The device was therefore called the cryophorus meaning cold carrier in Greek. We now know that the process is of the opposite character, the freezing being brought about by the transport of the latent heat of evaporation from the warm flask to the cold flask. What had actually been discovered was a heat siphon.
This method of siphoning heat was later improved by Nikola Tesla and a two-stage pump and turbine was patented in England in 1909. By 1913 the same machine had been patented in 21 different countries, Tesla's most patented machine. What Nikola Tesla had invented was an open-air mechanical cryophorus. The pump is a four-stroke cycle rotary compression ignition engine and replaced the vacuum in Wollaston's closed system cryophorus and the continuous vacuum allowed an open-air two-stage machine to harness ambient heat and atmospheric pressure.